staves. staves. And the singular might be staff. Singular staff, plural stave. Ah. It's these five lines. Mm -hmm. Every set, that's one staff, that's another staff, that's another staff. Mm -hmm. And they're basically like the framework. Like if you were writing on paper with language, it would be like the alphabet. No, uh, like alphabet, alphabet, as in it's the thing you use to write the language no matter what you're writing. Okay. That, so it's always there no matter what. If you're reading music, that's there. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. And then the idea is that each of every space and then line above it is the next note. So that would be one note. That would be the note above it. That would be the note. So that's one note. That's the note above it. So that's each of those note. are a tone apart. So you have E. No, they're not. And then, no, I mean, yeah. between the notes is two, um, two tones. Not all of them. What? E, G, E. E to F, B to C. It's not a tone. Oh, okay. okay. I'm just trying to... Then why basic. isn't it? But then that's weird. Because a basically, tone is different because, to a note. It's because of how the keyboard works. Oh, so, okay. because the tone is... Yeah, so there's like... <laughs> I'm very skilled with playing with my adorno. Um. Cool. Okay. But yeah, back to the. We'll get onto the notes in a second. Back to the staff. Mm -hmm. And so the staff's like the the alphabet, the paper kind of thing which you always use. And then this little thing here, the clef, which in singing is usually the treble clef, but other clefs. They're very beautifully drawn. Other clefs include, actually no, I might just draw it on that. Yeah. Other clefs include like this. That's for like lower stuff, right? Yes, the bass clef. Mm. I've or, had singing lessons for four yes. years. I remember some things. Or if you're very adventurous, you can have like the <laughs> alto clef. Oh, the alto clef. Which is for violas, so not for singings. Okay. Unless you're really unlucky and doing some sort of weird medieval shit. Um, so yes. The clefs tell you what the, all the different notes on the different lines are. So, in the treble clef, the notes in the spaces going upwards spell face. How do I always get told these things and then forget that they're things? So, like, basically, if you're looking at, if you're trying to figure out what a note is, if it's on the bottom, it's F. Oh. Second line, A. Third line, C. Fourth line, E. Which means, by process of elimination, the ones on the lines are E, G, E, D, F. Oh, my singing teacher would always be like, use like some sort of like, every, every good boy deserves, deserves food. Or something food. Like yeah, that. every good boy yeah. deserves yeah. food. So that's, that's the one. Yeah. Um, yes. So that's the basic notes of each step, staff, stain, mm -hmm. thing. But because it's a, the next note is after each space in each line, if you wanted to go below that, mm -hmm. you would have to like, like make a line. Yeah. You could draw that there. So just mm -hmm. beneath it without a line. If you went any lower, it would have to have a line. That's middle C. That is middle C. And so that is... D. Yes. Oh, no. And the same goes up here. If I can draw... Yes, but the pen on it. You get the pick. It's meant to be on the line. <laughs> but because that's on the... Okay. Just, just get rid of it. Just, just <laughs> d d destroy the evidence. You have to put the. You have to put the rubber back down. That's fine. So yeah. So basically, our, each line in the space next to it is one successive note up. Mm -hmm. And if you use that basis in particular, you can figure out everything. That's by process of elimination. Especially if you know the every good boy deserves fruit. Um, so that's basic notes. Um, clefs. And clefs. So that's what music looks like on the page for note stuffs. Um, but if you just see the notes like that, you need something to tell you how long they're all going to be. Yup. 
That's that thing. That's when the note values. That's the note values, on. which I'm still going to draw in here. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty. Um, so make these. There's three building blocks of all note values in music. One looks like this and has a really cool tail. One, which is the most basic and most essential one, is a bit boring because it just has a stick. And then another one, which is kind of cool, has a stick but is empty because it doesn't have a soul because it's long. So in very basic terms, <coughs> this one here, which is called a crotchet. Mm -hmm. It's cool, I know their names now, you don't have to write it Sweet. every time. <laughs> crotchet is worth one count in most mm -hmm. situations. And then these two are respectively I was going to say that it looks like you put in the half, but it does. It does, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And that's one. That's two. Two. And then. Four, one. Yep. Yeah. And then there's also this motherfucker called a <laughs> semi breathe, which is worth four counts, which in most cases is worth a whole bar of music, which we get onto. So basically, if you're counting, between one, two. Da 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 Every one of these counts. If it was going da 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 Each of those notes would be a crop chip, and so they all look like that. Whereas if it was like da 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 they'd have a little tail, because they're quavers. And if it was Da 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 they would all be empty. So yes. Does that make any sense? Is that helpful? Cool. Um, what do you want to go? Do you want to go on to time signatures? Time signatures? Yeah. So it's four. What four. about dots? Because there are things about oh, dots. Is yes. that is that a, a, another half dots. of whatever it's worth, or is that something yep. you made up? No, I that's, mean, that's, that's all it. That's the thing. Basically, in any given situation, if you add a dot onto a note, like there or there, or there, it means you add on half of what that note's worth. So if it was onto that, it mean that's one and a half mm -hmm. beats. Whereas if it was on that, it would be three rather than two and a half. Sweet. You rarely see the same brief. <laughs> if you see two dots, that means it's a half and then half of that again. Ah. Oh. So it's like three quarters. So it'd be one and a half and a quarter which would be one and three quarters. But hopefully you never see that in musicals. Um, and in a similar way, you see this little thing with the baby tail? Mm -hmm. You sometimes get notes which are shorter than that and need to be like a quarter or an eighth. And so for each time it's divided by two, you get another little tail on top. So that just means that is half of that, which is half of that. Which is half of that. Which is half of that. Do you want to do a set a joint set of quaver and quaver? Yep. Um, and then sometimes a joint semi quaver and quaver. Yeah. Oh yeah, just sort of Or just joint, yeah. 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 The ones with the little tails, so the quavers and semi quavers and the ones that are smaller than them, because they have little tails, if they're next to each other, because it would look kind of unneat to just have lots of notes with lots of tails, what they do when writing music is they join them together, like this. So that still counts as half a beat each for each of those. Or like this. Okay. So that each half a beat. Um, and then that means two quarter ones. So basically the ones with the tails and ones with the lines above them going horizontally are worth the same. It's a lot easier to do that when you're sort of changing notes as well. Yeah. We have some examples, shouldn't we? I've got my house seat book. 
Sweet. Yep. Good knees that. I don't have my hands to see do I? I have my hands to see do Oh, this is a film, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, but, yeah, but, uh... Um, so time signatures work in the sense that the top number is for how many um, notes you have apart. So for this, it's four. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. It's the same one first. Um, yeah, and this dictates uh, what. Uh, how long each how, how, how value, what the note values are for each one. So for this is going to be crotchet. So you're going to have four crotchet bars. Um, oh. Basically a bar is a measure in music. So yeah. you have one, two, three, four, two, mm -hmm. two, three, four. Or you'll count, if you're doing a waltz, it'll be like one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, da, da, da. Um, but usually it's four. But each of these little so measures of music. I don't know what the bottom four means in the bottom. Okay, so, like so the, in this, the top number, so each bar is a system of however many counts in one particular pattern. Um, the top number tells you how many counts they're going to be, and the bottom number tells you how long those counts are meant to be. So, in most cases, you'll see four on the bottom because you're counting in crotchets because that's usually one beat. Why is it four? Because the, uh, four symbolises the Oh, so that's how so many beats there are in the yeah. bar. Yeah. And, so and combined with how many counts there are, you know what a beat has, a count yeah. has to be worth. So, yeah, basically this tells you <coughs> what it's worth, so how long each beat is, which is usually mm -hmm. four, it's, it's counted as four because a crotchet is four, mm -hmm. because of reasons. Okay. Actually no, I'll explain so it. So if it was, if the lower number was two, it would be two minimum, it would be, it would be minimum uh, beat worth, if that makes sense. Yes. In the sense that you get four crotchets which are worth two minims, which are worth eight quavers. Okay, so the top one is just how many there are, mm -hmm. and the bottom... Um, no, there isn't... Oh, it gets really complicated. Just do two, four, nine. Yep. Cool. In most situations, the only numbers you'll see on the bottom will be 2, 4, and 8. 4 is a crutchet. So a normal beat that looks like that. So you'll see 4 of those, or their equivalent, in each bar. 2 means minim. So you'll be counting in minims, which means it's usually slower. So it's if it's two on the bottom, it goes one, two, one, two, as opposed to four on the bottom, which is really the two. basically the bot. And if it's eight, it's a quaver. The only reason that the bottom number exists, the only reason why singers need to know about it, is basically it's for the conductor and for the musicians who are having to like count out the beats. Okay, so if it was, so if a 4-4, four, four, yeah. but you did four crotchets, yeah. so what yeah. would you put in one bar for 4-2 two then? 2-4. Two, 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 four. So, yeah, so for 4-2, four, four. Two, it would be, you have four, so for just ease purposes, we're going to use four crotchets. Because mm -hmm. they're each worth one, so it'd be one, two, three, four, which is the four there. And for the 2-4, you have Okay. So it's yeah. this dictates it's a four crotchet beat bar, mm -hmm. and that's how many you're gonna have. Um, I know people don't like thinking of them as fractions, yeah. but for the basis of this, it's a lot easier yeah. to think that. So when you have something like 
when you have something like 4-4, four, four, mm -hmm. in your frame of mind, it's not great for the conductor, but for when you're thinking of singing, that's the same as 2-2 two, two, or 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay. So that is the same, because those are both worth one, which means that they are the equivalent of a minimum. So a minimum. So that would be uh, a two minimum beats, and that's how many you have. So you have two two minimum beat bars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and in the same way, yeah. you would have eight mm -hmm. uh, quavers. Basically, the number on the bottom is for the conductor to count because if it was a very slow piece, um, you wouldn't want them to be counting like eight or six times in one bar, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want them to go one. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. And in that case, you'd use a two on the bottom because each count is a minimum. Um, and if it, on the other way around it was very, very fast, you wouldn't want them to have to be counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you use an eight instead to so count every two or every three crotchets rather than every single one of them. Mm -hmm. But as a singer reading the music, you don't need to give a shit about the bottom two, the top the bottom ones. The top ones are the important ones because they tell you how many effect counts there are in a bar. Okay, cool. So, yes, try not to worry about the bottom mm. ones too much. Mm. Apart from two means that they're long counts, four means they're normal counts, and eight means that they are quick counts. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Right. Do we want to do key signatures? I mean, our key signatures are just sharps and flats. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we need a keyboard for this. Yeah. <coughs> so. <coughs> Keys are fun. They are. So if you look at a keyboard, you've got middle C here. And every note, so every <coughs> space next to every line, next to every line to every space, mm -hmm. is the next white note up on the keyboard. But as you can see, we have seven different white notes but five of them, well no, several ones of them, are separated by these different black notes. And these black notes are invariably sharps and flats to make things sound more interesting. Um, so, we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. But each of the black notes if a black note is just above a note below it, it's a sharp. And if a black note is just below the, the white note on top of it, it's a flat. So if you're playing a C and then you played that, mm -hmm. you could call that a C sharp. But if you were focused, you could also call, could also call it a D flat. So each sharp is also a flat. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why this isn't shown as an extra line or space on there is because there's two situations where the white notes aren't separated by black notes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because the scale or mode that all of Western music is based on, the C major scale, doesn't actually go up in even intervals. You have these two instances where it goes up by a smaller step than all the other steps because if it were to go up by an equal step each time it would sound like this yeah. which is a bit <laughs> bleh and also yeah wow so the easy way to remember that is that it works in groups of two and then groups of three with um, no black no in between two so the Red, so there's D flat, um, which is also no, sorry, that's uh, D sharp, which is also E flat. Yep. Um, and then that would either be F flat, which is technically E because there's no black note in between, or E sharp, which is technically F. The only reason that's ever really done is because of key signature. Um, yep. And just again conductors and teaching purposes. Um, so then you have the groups of 
this is where this is one group, then you have the break here for the notes, then you have and this carries on um, in a space where you have uh, B flat being B, uh, C flat being B and uh, C flat being B and B sharp yeah. being C. Um, again, that is the exact same thing uh, with D and E. So it doesn't matter whether you're referring to it as this sharp or this flat, um, it, it's still going to be the same note, uh, and that's just based on key signature, which is another very confusing topic which <laughs> comes from different keys and different chords. Um, is that everything? That's all. We can do key signatures quickly, as in basically what a key signature is, is it just tells you um, which, instead of writing out... Oh, we haven't actually done the sharp and flat signs. Oh, right. Sorry, yeah. Um, so... Yes. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. If you see that next to a note, That's it's like a squashed B. Yeah. That means it's flat. Yeah. You see that next to a note? It's sharp. And what a key signature is, is that in lots of pieces, after the clef telling you what all the notes you know, are, like, sort of sharps or some flats, and yeah, and the time signature telling you what the numbers are, mm -hmm. you will sometimes see this kind of thing. And what that tells you is that instead of every single time in the song writing yeah, just that like before every, every time single the note, note is there. it just means every single time they appear, mm -hmm. they are like that. Yeah. And the same if it was flats as well. Which means that you can have songs in different keys. Oh god, why would you put a flat on there? <laughs> <laughs> which means that you can have songs that sound different and aren't all in the same key because mm -hmm. that means you can change keys and have songs written so different people can sing them and just so they sound different because if everything was in C major all the time it would sound really really bland um yeah music theory is really big <laughs> it's very, um, in terms of singing, it's simple. In fact, you just need to know time signature in terms of how you're counting. So one, two, three, four, four. And what the notes that two. I get by. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all this is. It's just to make sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Let me think. Think about things. Anybody at home has any questions <laughs> about? How to do basic music theory. Because this video Should will that. really be going yeah. out. You can uh, contact Jem or Bella regarding um. at development. Probably go to Gem. 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 showstoppers.co.uk. That's their email. Or go via Facebook. Um, Carry a pigeon that also yes. is popular. Maybe smoke signal. And uh, I think that's everything that we want to cover. Should we do a recap? Yes. In the recap, you have two clefs, two main clefs that you'll be using to sing, which is treble and bass. Treble will basically be covering all of you unless you are a male, in which case you'll be using bass. Um, sometimes. Sometimes. If you're a tenor, you'll mainly be using the treble clef. Um, you also have uh, different note values, the main ones which you'll be using our quaver crotchet minimum um, for values of a, uh, half, a whole and two um, and this ties into the key, not key signature, to the uh, the, the words just gone crap, straight out of my head time signature, that's all um, in which case you just really need to pay attention to the top, no uh, top number which is in Andy's example two uh, crotchet notes uh, every bar. Um, so that would be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 
to um, because it's at the speed of crotchets but there's only two of them per bar. Uh, you can join quavers um, and semi-quavers uh, to make it easier to transfer notes and of course you have flats and sharps uh, which just denote one tone away from each other uh, and it's just finding the balance in between those. So it should hopefully make it a lot easier for you guys to read music, um, especially in relation to the stuff we do, because it is effectively basic uh, music when singing, they don't want to make it too complicated. Um, and of course key signatures as well, which just to note, making sure you can uh, read an F sharp in this case throughout the entire piece. What key is that? Is that I want to say G major. It is. Oh, it is G major. G major. Yeah. G major. I'm not going to bother trying to talk about what key it's called. Fine. I just know that, that I know that one. That's it. That's yeah. the extent of my knowledge of keys. It basically and goes. It goes round in a circle. Um, it's not something you know. But it goes round in a circle. So for every key, you gain one sharp. Mm -hmm. um, it's always to do with major and minors. Ah uh, yes, and the lovely anagrams. I can't write. What does that say? <laughs> Sharp. Uh -huh. That says. <laughs> um, so yes, basically you're seeing a visual representation. That's the clef, which is treble. So that's why all the notes are what they are. That's the key signature telling you that every time F appears. So is it F anywhere, not just F nope. there? Every F anywhere, okay. not just there, which is why that is F sharp. Ah. So F anywhere is sharp. Two four means there's two counts in each bar. Four just means they're normal counts. And then so you got one crotchet count, two crotchet count. Then you've got the quavers, which are half counts all tied together at the top because their tails join together like an avatar, mm -hmm. which is why there's four in one bar. Um, and as you can see, because it's an F up there, it's sharp. And then we've got a minimum here, which is two counts, which is why it's by itself. And because there's a little flat sign in front of it, it means it is B flat. So it'd be slight, it'd be a tiny bit lower than what it normally is. And on the piano, on the piano, that wonderful thing I've just made up would sound like. <laughs> That's something. <laughs> Brilliant. So it's like one, two, one, and two, and one, two. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, just it's easier when you're counting these. Just go one and two, and especially yeah, if it's in count of two. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's everything.